welcome back in the previous lecture we had derived an expression for change of neutron with time in a nuclear fission reactor in this lecture we will look at different components and their function in a nuclear fission reactor we had described the different components via a schematic in of a nuclear reactor, we will address the function of the different components in this lecture. Once a nuclear reactor is operational, if the number of neutrons is more than, neutrons generated is more than what is consumed, and if a nuclear fuel is present, it is possible to sustain a nuclear fission uh, reactor. However, to start the nuclear fission reactor, we need some external source of neutron. Typically, American americium beryllium and antimony beryllium, uh, these alloys are used as neutron sources for initiation of a nuclear fission reactor. Another approach takes into account the low binding energy of deuterium because the separation energy is less. Uh, you can use hard, hard gamma rays um, on ex when heavy water is exposed to hard gamma rays. It ejects out a neutron. That can be a way to initiate, initiate a nuclear uh, fission reactor. This is an important aspect of a uh, fission reactor. Um, I, we started this lecture on nuclear reactors uh, by contrasting a nuclear reactor against an atomic bomb. In atomic bomb, you have to have control in the way you initiate uh, the fission. After that, uh, control is not that critical. But in a nuclear reactor, you want to operate at a particular power output. So how do you control is very critical and control rods are the most important factor in controlling a nuclear reactor. Overall, rate depends upon two main factors, the amount of fuel that is present and neutrons that are present inside the reactor. A nuclear reactor is more like a batch reactor in the chemical engineering sense. It is not a, a flow reactor. That is, what is a batch reactor? You feed in the reactants and sort of close the reactor. Okay, Then there is always an unsteady state operation of the reactor because as the fuel gets consumed, its concentration would decrease therefore you your rate will tend to decrease how do you compensate for the decrease in nuclear fuel concentration and still get a steady state the way to do that is while this is decreasing you may be able to increase the neutron concentration in the reactor let us see how that is done so essence is this is going to be decreasing during the operation but still we want to have a steady state and the way to do, get that going steady state going is to have a control on uh, excess multiplication factor we had already defined this that is uh, the k effective uh, minus one right so this is indicative of how much more neutron you have compared to what you are consuming you are consuming one and then this is indicative of how much more neutron is being generated. Uh, uh, this overall uh, gives you this quantity, which is the excess neutron. If K excess is uh, zero, uh, then steady state power can be uh, maintained if uh, for a given nuclear fuel concentration. So the main thing you have to take into account is the control of this provides a handle on the rate of the reaction. So K excess is a 
function of many factors. It depends upon the fuel that is present, reflector, uh, moderate, moderator, and the control rods. The main discussion here is on the control rods. Control rod is a component which has high absorption cross-section for neutron. C refers capture cross-section. So the there are some common control rods in a modern nuclear reactor. Boron or cadmium have high sigma C uh, cross reaction cross-section for capture. Therefore, uh, they are used in the control rod. There are different configurations for a control rod that depends upon the reactor geometry. We won't go into that. But the main thing to understand is these components are used for making a control rod. And this has a dominant role in controlling KXS, uh, which helps you uh, maintain a steady state. Supposing you have a nuclear fission process, for example, let's say tellurium is being generated from, uh, tellurium is one of the fragments from a nuclear fission, that undergoes a series of radioactive decay, let's say beta decay, and then you get xenon. Xenon is uh, a nuclear poison in the sense that it has a high sigma C, that is it can capture neutrons very well, and uh, that neutron that is captured by xenon is lost, okay? So it is a neutron poison. So if xenon builds up in a reactor, you typically shut down the reactor and wait for it to decay. So if you look at the half-life of xenon, it's about 9.14. So if there is an excess xenon that is uh, built up, your K excess will become less than zero. Uh, therefore, you, are, you will not be able to sustain the nuclear fission reaction. So what you do is you try to uh, shut down the reactor for some time so that uh, the concentration of xenon decreases. So you, you do not want to be having a lot of neutron poison in your reactor. And the cladding material is very important for nuclear reactor. So there are, even from the early days of nuclear science and engineering, Many aspects of metallurgy was very critical for practical implementation of uh, nuclear energy. Okay, so whether you are making an atomic bomb or you are running a nuclear power plant or a research reactor, uh, metallurgy plays an important role. So a lot of research has gone into developing appropriate alloys. So alloys have to have the alloy material has to have certain features. It has to have low absorption cross-section. That is, it should not be absorbing a lot of uh, neutrons because all the neutrons taken in by this cladding material is wasted. So you typically want to have fairly uh, low absorption cross-section. So these numbers have been obtained via experiments uh, with thermal neutrons. And in addition, the effect of uh, corrosion on cladding material has also been well explored. So depending upon the coolant that is used, uh, a variety of uh, cladding material is available to make a nuclear reactor. Another important factor is a way to estimate the size of a, uh, a chain reacting system. This comes from, uh, we are just using this formula, we are not deriving this formula. If you have taken a course on transport phenomena, uh, this is a, a formula that is derived from basic principles of diffusion, uh, but we'll be just using this formula to estimate a size. So M refers to something called the migration length. Uh, this is the average distance traveled by a neutron in its lifetime, okay, before it gets absorbed or gets used up in some manner. So it, it helps to have a, a reasonable idea of the length scale here. It is about seven meters for, seven centimeters for water, 
50 centimeters for graphite. Graphite is a moderator. Uh, so it can travel quite a bit, considering neutron is an extremely small object, okay? Because neutron is a neutral object, uh, it can travel quite a distance before it gets used up. So this factor uh, B is a shape factor, depends upon um, um, the, the way the nuclear uh, reactor and fuel is assembled. It is pi squared for a sphere. This is all well documented, the shape factors. Uh, from basic aspects of diffusion, we know this. And then the other important factor here is K axis. We have defined this in our previous lectures. So if you have, let's say, 0 0.05, this is for uh, heterogeneous uranium and graphite moderator. Uh, if this is K axis, by putting all these things together, you get a length scale R that gives you a size. It is about 700 centimeters. So it is not too large, but it's neither too small. So if you want to make it smaller, you want to have greater K axis that is possible with highly enriched fuel and water moderation, okay? Um, here you have R as uh, 30 centimeters. This is rather compact. Again, you if you have highly enriched fuel with sodium, liquid sodium as the coolant, uh, you have this R. And if you have natural uranium, that is without enrichment, with heavy water moderation, you have an R uh, given by this number. We have looked at the pros and cons of different um, coolants and fuel in previous lectures. So you can get an idea of why K axis changes in a particular manner, uh, depending upon uh, these different configurations. In the next lecture, we will look at nuclear research reactors. Thank you.